Hey, this is Patrick Sullivan. Welcome to my shop. Let me tell you a shaggy dog story about how good workers sometimes go astray. This is a kind of postscript to the video on crosscut jigs that I posted about a week ago. I bought this Incra miter jig about 15 to 20 years ago. It came with no fence, so I cut a strip of MDF and screwed it firmly to the jig. And that served me pretty well for several years. Then I bought a long piece of this aluminum extrusion for another job. I loved it. It's well made and, well, it coordinates with the color of my eyes. When I got done, I had a short length left over. This short length that you see right here. I think you can probably see where this is going. I wanted the fence to slide so I could get it close to the saw blade to support my work. Incra makes some very fancy looking aluminum fences with lots of sliding parts and with fairly fancy price tags. I thought this was a chance to make something similar using leftover materials. Now this extrusion isn't cheap, but I'd already paid for it and I didn't want this gorgeous blue baby lying around in my scrap bin collecting nicks and dings. Some nice knobs would be just the ticket for securing the fence to the jig. I read nothing that was the right size. This little three-sided black one was the smallest in my collection, and you can easily see that it's way too big. Large machine screws seemed like the answer. I had some quarter-inch screws, those are roughly M6s, that would work. I also had a strip of steel in my scrap bin that by some miracle fit in the slots in the extrusion. So I drilled and tapped two holes to fit my screws, added some washers to adjust the length, and I was up and running in no time. It all seemed logical at the time, and I had a big smile on my face. However, I quickly realized that even though my screwdrivers were just a few feet away, that was just a few feet too many. I wanted to loosen and tighten the screws without any tools. I decided I needed to make some nice small knobs. First, I measured the problem. The distance from the center of the slot to the base of the jig was just a hair over 7 16ths of an inch or 11 millimeters. This is the turning radius. That means the diameter of my new knobs had to be no larger than 7 eighths of an inch or 22 millimeters. I drew a design for a five pointed knob on my computer and I printed several paper patterns. By the way, I posted this pattern on my website along with the dimensions of my crosscut sled that I discussed in my previous video. I pasted the patterns on a scrap of something, maybe it was African mahogany, but any hardwood would do. I used a birdcage awl to create a starting hole for the Forstner bits I plan to use. If you don't recognize this tool, that may be because I made it specifically for this kind of job out of tungsten carbide, and my grinding of the tip was done freehand. It was cosmetically less than perfect, but it really works like a charm. Drill five holes with a bit that's roughly 3 8 inch or 10 millimeters. Then cut the short webs between the holes with a bandsaw or a handsaw. Now we get to one of the parts of the story where a bright, clear-thinking person might have said, wait, what are you doing next? Well, I cut off the top so I could bury the head of a quarter-inch bolt inside the knob. No one wants to look at bolt heads and epoxy for the rest of their life. I countersunk a recess for the bolt head. Here I'm just measuring to be sure the recess is deep enough to accommodate the head. Then I drilled a smaller hole through the lower part of the knob that was a snug fit for the threaded shaft of the bolt. Let me show you how this will ultimately be put together with some epoxy in a way that anchors the bolt but conceals the head. Try to keep epoxy out of the threads that protrude from the bottom. If you put a little paste wax on those threads, 
that will usually prevent any epoxy from bonding. Push the bolt in firmly and press the cap on top, aligning the grain for a good color match. Can you see my alignment marks? I forgot them first time. Once the epoxy is set, sand off the glue stains and the squeeze out. Sanding actually only takes a few minutes. You're not removing very much wood. You can easily do this by hand. Shape the head to your personal taste. I wanted to round the end slightly and remove the sharp corners. This is how it ended up. Three to four coats of spray acrylic or lacquer will provide a nice shine and some color pop. Do they work? Oh yeah. It's easy to tighten them enough to lock the fence in place and just as easy to loosen them. The knob only has to rotate about a quarter of a turn. Now, let's stand back and think about this project. I realize that some of you are already composing comments telling me that there's an easier way to do this. And you're right. First, making that strip of steel with threaded holes to slide in the slot was unnecessary, and it actually made life more complicated. Regular bolt heads will fit in the T-Track, and they make special bolts that slide in even easier. You can buy these kind of bolts in the hardware store where they're called toilet bolts, and they work perfectly. They're also cheaper. If a bolt head is sliding in the track, then you need some kind of a nut on the outside. I thought that wing nuts would not work because the diameter was larger than the maximum that I'd measured. In fact, when I later tried it, I found that there was enough wobble in the fit of the bolt heads that I could get wing nuts on, even though they're about five millimeters larger than my predicted maximum. Now, I'm a little prejudiced against wing nuts. I think they look kind of cheap. I own some knurled brass nuts that fit quarter inch bolts, but they're only five eighths of an inch in diameter. I thought they would be difficult to tighten adequately in the close quarters of this jig. However, when I finally tried them, I found that I was wrong about that too. You could make these work. However, I like my shop-made knobs, in part because they're so much larger. They're about 40% bigger in diameter and more than twice as deep, giving your fingers much more purchase and mechanical advantage. However, they could be made more simply. If I had used toilet bolts or T-track bolts, then I could just epoxy a regular nut in the bottom of a wooden knob. That would eliminate cutting off the cap and gluing it back on. So in the end, I got the toolless adjustment knobs that I wanted, but I took the long way around. Here's hoping you can learn something from my overly complicated and poorly thought out adventure in knob making. Thanks for watching.